Hello, good evening and welcome to tonight's Telecom TV Super Panel being held here in probably the snazziest car lot in the world. This is our second time here at the Lohman Museum of, and they've got more than 250 vintage and rare cars here and you'll all get a chance to look at them a bit later on after tonight's panel session. But business of the day now is to just say that this is as I said, sponsored by Hewlett Packard Enterprise and Intel. And the subject for tonight is RMEC and NFV, the key building blocks for 5G. And to answer that question, I have five panelists here, all of whom are good friends with each other and with Telecom TV. So we know each other well. Um, and I'm going to introduce them very quickly. They'll tell you more about themselves, I'm sure, in the course of what we're going to be talking about. On my left is Caroline Chan from Intel. Caroline, welcome. Last saw you in. Barcelona at, That's right. in, at uh, Mobile World. Um, next door, Diego Lopez, Telefonica. Diego, good to see you again. Diego's suffering a bit. He's got a bad cold, so he'll be croaking at us. I will try to make my voice as clear as possible. Thank you. <laughs> next to him is Marcus Brunner of Swisscom. Marcus, good to see you again. Hi. Thanks for being Hi. here. Then Axel Klauberg from Deutsche Telekom. Axel, also, welcome to you. And down at the end there, Vine Saxena. I'm, I'm, I'm going to give you his title. He's a fellow of Hewlett Packard Enterprise. Not just a common old garden entity, he's a fellow. <laughs> one of only 12. So welcome as well. Thanks. So let's get to this. I'm going to, I'm, I'm going to ask first, uh, I'm going to ask Axel this question to, be, to begin with. And I'd like to say this. Um, this is pretty much a chicken and an egg situation, many people say. You know, it's this old question, did Adam have a navel, sort of thing. Um, which came first, the, the chicken or the egg, which comes first, NFV or MSC? I well, beg your pardon, MEC. <laughs> <laughs> well, the answer sounds so easy, on the first look at least. NFV just got five, and edge computing is not even there yet in production. But on the second side, look, looking a little bit deeper, it's actually not that easy to answer, because uh, it very much depends on where you define the edge, and it very much depends, uh, depends on the operator and uh, how far they are in the NFV deployment cycle, for example. If you, let's say, look at a country like Germany, you can deliver uh, low latency services with less than 10 milliseconds, actually still from locations I would call call locations. And those are the locations we are starting with NFV as well. So in this case, NFV would be first. But if you, if you look at other operators, like in China and other places, they are starting with edge services first. So for them, the picture looks different. So there's no one size fits all in the answer, like with the chicken and the egg. <laughs> OK. Are you all in agreement with that? Or is there something different going on? Well, I, I tend to, to think that this, uh, as it happens, because these kind of questions happened in the past about was, uh, w whether uh, NFV was possible without, without SDN or not. Is, uh, I, I would say that uh, for sure you, you can have any of them independently. You can have Mac independently of NFV and NFV independently of uh, SDN and Mac independent of SDN. The point is that the fact is that it would be extremely difficult to avoid the succession. It's the same way that it's extremely difficult to have, I don't know, a mass production with elect without electricity or, I don't know, uh, central heating without oil or, 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 or power plants. We, you can, for sure you can. But it would be so difficult that there is no reason for trying to, to go that way. Yeah, I, I agree with Diego. I think if there is a market need, people will deliver. However, without NFV, MEC will be a more difficult, mm -hmm. uh, probably not as cost effective, but you know, people still do it on-prem because they need to have that, have that requirements. But NFV will make Mac so much easier. It's like a perfect marriage. There is one, is there? There is one. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, okay, thank you for that. Um, we've, we've skirted around the edge of this. My next question to you as, as a panel is, have, listening to what you were saying, does MEC even need NFV? Diego addressed part of that. What do you say? Vinay, you go for this one. So I think, you know, if you look at the principles of NFV, I think they'll be leveraged in, in, in the MEC deployment. So I don't think, you know, we can say that 
uh, you know, MEC can be done. Uh, MEC can be done without NFV. There's no doubt about it. But should I take advantage of the principles of NFV and SDN to deploy MEC? The answer is absolutely. And I think that's what we need to keep in mind is as we deploy MEC, are we taking advantage of the principles of NFV and SDN or the programmability of the network to deliver the services from the edge that truly deserves to be running there? In other words, what services run on the edge? Where is the edge, as Alex said, uh, you know, becomes critical. Uh, so defining that, defining the business case, the services that go along with it, and then picking the right principles architecturally that make sense to deploy these services. So I think NFV will play an integral part, in my opinion, to deliver MEC services. Malkish. So for, for us as Swisscom, uh, it's sort of the same thing, whether right. it's MEC or NFV, we don't, we don't see a really big difference. And even if, I mean, Axel says he has a, a small network, we have like a city <laughs> network of his. <laughs> So, I mean, uh, Swisscom as a small country, uh, uh, we have only a few milliseconds cross country, so there is no, no point in, in edge. Probably the whole, our whole network is edge already. <laughs> That's a different approach, I'll give you that. <laughs> But, but we recently actually did a trial um, in, in China. Um, actually, there's a white paper and press release around it. And you'd be surprised if you think about in China, it is a large country, but people think of fiber everywhere. But we work with um, Tencent and China Unicom and Nokia in that trial. Well, we were surprised to learn that without Mac, the latency is around 30 milliseconds. So that was very significant to do, for you to do like a video content and they were trying to augment live action on top of a live action and brought rebroadcast it through micro channel and it really was achievable uh, with Mac and, and that really proven out the, the, the business model and th then the next discussion is how does the money transaction changing hands between the network operator like you and the content owner like uh, the over-the-top guys and, and where does the entire value chain make sense for this to go uh, a big, a large scale? That is really the crux of the, of the uh, equation right now. Yeah. I, th I think there are some commonalities as well. Uh, when we look at NFV, uh, there's a journey we're on towards uh, cloud-native applications. And I strongly believe that cloud-native is a prerequisite for edge computing mm -hmm. as well. And that brings up the common problem for both. It's actually the orchestration problem. And uh, we're also going to see mixed deployments where you have, for example, partner applications uh, which are produced in the edge, but there might be uh, core services which are run in the edge as well, like uh, in the mobile network uh, to guarantee the low latency, you need to have some core uh, functionalities in the edge as well. So you're going to see that mix, and that's why uh, the two are dependent on each other. And uh, as both are moving towards cloud native, I think that's the way forward anyhow. So probably I was a bit too negative on, on, on the edge <laughs> because, uh, I mean, we have use cases where we run basically an edge component on customer side. There are use cases for that uh, as well. It's not because of the latency in our network or something like that, but there are business, mm -hmm. business data control, right. security oriented mm -hmm. features, but not the latency bit. No, no, but anyway, I, I'm glad that uh, uh, Axel came uh, with, the, uh, with the mother of orchestration because it's something that I think is crucial in the, in the whole relationship. Because right now, NFV is very much based on cloud. And cloud is very much associated with big, huge, consolidated data centers that are providing service to hundreds of thousands or millions of people and, and different services and all the like. If we're talking edge, we're talking small, very um, um, distributed, sparse um, computing facilities in which the current orchestration models probably would simply not work. The, the time, just if you think about uh, the current procedures for cloud federation to integrate different orchestrators, they are in the, in the minutes delay. See, if we're talking about an orchestration or almost two real time applications, we cannot afford that, simply. And well, when it comes to the coordination, what is running on the big data center, etc., the challenge is there and a completely new approach to orchestration. And what is most important is a reduced footprint of the, uh, of the orchestrator. Right now, running a, the, 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 the leanest 
uh, OpenStack, cost two, three servers, top, rack, uh, uh, top range uh, servers. You cannot afford that if you're going to make a distributed, I mean, a distributed infrastructure in which you will have two servers running applications. For servers running orchestration, to tell me. Well, I don't know. That's the questions you're here to answer. <laughs> <laughs> no, I mean, I mean we, 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 we have been working on this. We, we have several projects. I mean, part of that, the, the project that we are uh, running in, 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 with the collaboration of Etsy and many other operators, OSM precisely is very much focused on having a much more lightweight orchestration uh, mechanisms able to run at the edge. And we are working with that in, uh, in several research projects as well.